Local functions. Um, why, why are we not put down loss of uh, you know, recreation land or inadequate recreation land as an additional reason for refusing to show that it matters as much as health employment goes and as much as work and as much as inadequate you know, uh, layouts will be um, in that land? Chief, perhaps you have to uh, thank you through you, Chair. Uh, yes, yeah, Sports England uh, did object to, to the proposal on that basis, but for those members who attended the site visit and, and saw um, the area where the, the, rec the recreational ground um, um, is laid out, it, it hasn't been used for recreation for a very long time. Um, it's, it's substantially overgrown and there are other recreational facilities um, within the area, so um, we didn't feel that that was a reason and for refusal that, 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 that we could robustly defend. I mean, you know, we have to be, and we have been pragmatic uh, at this committee in the past over other so-called employment use sites. Um, you know, a number of applications have come to convert from industrial use to leisure use within uh, the Bromborough estate and areas like that. We've been relatively pragmatic, but that hasn't resulted in the total loss of that building or that site uh, forever and a day. And, and I think pretty permanently, if you put 230 houses on a site, it ain't gonna be used uh, for, for employment uses ever, ever again. So we need to be uh, pragmatic when it's necessary. But usually when we make such major departures from our policies, we have to demonstrate uh, an overall great gain for the borough or, or something really special. So we have developed in the green belt when it's been exceptional circumstances and you know, we've created 10,000 jobs. People may say that, that that's a price we're paying. But what are we get in, in terms of that within this application, just getting a number of, of extra houses, which we have apparently got adequately uh, sufficient land identified already to meet our housing policy. So, so it isn't that overall sort of emphasis um, to, to, to do that. I, I would just be quite concerned though about um, item three within the, the, the objections. I believe there is work taking place over a long period of time by United Utilities and the Environment Agency around the issue of flooding. And I wouldn't want this land that we want to be used for employment use forever be blighted by that, that sort of that, that condition and it will forever be uh, a flood risk because my view is if we want to use it for employment use, which is what I think I'm sensing from everyone's objection, uh, and that we would need to make sure it was safe for industrial use as well as any, any other future use that the committee needs. So, so I'd be mindful, maybe obviously as it's situated now, and houses, and I, I understand the difficulty with housing that by placing housing, you put extra burden on uh, sort of service strength, which I understand the mechanisms that. But likewise, if a large industrial unit was to be built there, we would need some guarantee for the, the owners or the investors that they would not ever be at risk of flooding. So I think for the, the, the uh, regeneration department need to address that and think about that in the future. Having said that, um, you know, it's been eloquently put forward by everybody else that, that this is an application, I think, that tries to move the site on, but not in the direction we want to. So uh, it might be a case of uh, try again uh, with a different type of application, but this certainly doesn't hit the mark. But Just through you, um, Chair, um, I think um, the, the, the draft reason for refusal um, three, the, the key um, element of that is that it's not been adequately demonstrated in, in these circumstances. Is in the report, um, but I can't just locate them at the moment. But there are five vacant units 
on the site opposite. Um, I was about, I think, 20, if you just remember me, I'll, I'll locate it in the report. This proposal is a householder application for a two-storey side extension to the property. Um, the property is a modern detached house set within quite a small modern um, cul-de-sac that contains five properties, each detached, each that vary in both design and scale. The proposal has been amended um, since it was first submitted to reduce the scale and sets the extension back from the front elevation and it also incorporates the existing, the existing footprint of the garage to the side. The amendments are uh, considered to improve the overall appearance and the setting within the street scene. The proposed extension will not result in any overlooking and a condition is proposed to obscurely glaze the windows in the side elevation um, which are adjacent to the, to the property next door. Um, it's considered that there's no dominance, it's not an overbearing structure and it's of course with policy HS11 11, and is recommended for approval. Okay, let's do it. So has anybody got any comments? Chair, if I may, may we just see a plan of the site actually, just to show exactly where the extension goes. I think it would be of greater uh, information than the plan that's shown purely by the committee documents. Chair, I was thinking more of a site plan. Have you got a site plan that actually shows the development sitting on the site? Um, the residential use would be adjacent to existing businesses 
that could affect the future occupants of both the dwellings, the residential units, and the occupants of the employment uses either side and in the area in general. It's contrary to policy EM8 and it's recommended for refusal. Okay, the comments. Elisa. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm just conscious of the fact that the reasons for refusal to plan in Council Harris has requested that the application be removed from delegated authority and it will also request that the plan can be cited. Is that the case or not? He, he has already asked to approach them. Okay, thank you. Yes. Yeah, thank you, Chair. <coughs> just, a very, just a very brief comment, really. On page 15, the top paragraph does say the application site consists of a former public house, the upper floors of which are in residential use as two flats. Uh, you know, we've decided or we've said that this is a sort of a change from an industrial area to a residential area when in actual fact the building itself already contains two flats on the first floor. I wonder if the officers would just care to comment on the relevance or irrelevance of that comment with regard to whether one should approve this or not. Uh, thank you, Steve, Chair. Um, one flat at the first floor is permitted development, so we'd have no control over that. Um, the other unit we understand is unauthorised, it's an unauthorised um, uh, residential unit um, and we believe it's been there um, long, and all, uh, long enough to be, um, uh, uh, but we can no longer take enforcement action against it. Sorry, Chair, but the reality is that will, will, will have been where the landlord used to live when it was the old English gentleman. He, I pub. Sadly, I used to frequent so I navigate my way around town by pubs. Um, so so it, that's probably where that, that use had come from because it was a, a, a public house and latterly a cafe. I mean. um,